Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <laughs> Today, I would like to share a bit more about myself and what I'm standing for in the year of 09 and 10. My name is Li Zhen. I'm born and raised up in a normal family in Beijing. My team <coughs> call me my Chinese boy, and I always see a Chinese boy. <laughs> and my region in the Kangxia East, they call me AP Region Papa. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be the Papa, to be part of the family of such a region of diversity, performing, and loving. And now, mood switch. I'm the desperate candidate of PAI. You can see that from my red eyes, huh? <laughs> it's not only because of the infection I got. It is also because I want to be PI next year. So much and so much. Do you feel it? <laughs> Are you feeling it? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. All right. Besides those words that I use to describe myself, there's one single word that you cannot miss before you draw the conclusion that you already knew enough about Li Zhen. That is ambitious. I'm an ambitious person. Yeah, exactly. I'm an extremely ambitious person. Oh, alright, well, okay. Sometimes I can be scarily ambitious. But it doesn't matter how much I, sometimes I, I, I can be scared, uh, the, the scary I can be, I can always be the cash cow, the worth of people's investments. Because I can always have the, I always have the capability to transform my ambition, to transform my dream into reality. And this part of my characteristic, characteristic has really started to emerge, even uh, during my elementary school time. I was being allocated randomly to a very normal, ordinary uh, elementary school, and I was, I cannot be an even more ordinary student. Yeah. It's so hard to believe that I can get a good academic mark in my class. It's in the same difficult level as leaving my dear friend Zaman and dance as well as Michael Jackson from tomorrow. But that was the situation. But when I started to uh, realize that the last one I went to school, I actually stand for a chance that I can apply for the best middle school in Beijing. No matter how hard it is, it is very hard, trust me. My heart didn't hesitate for one single second in telling me, Li Zhen, you are going to the best middle school. Although there are a lot of people, my family, my friends, my teachers trying to persuade me, trying to do a practical, you know, decision, but I decided I will pursue my dream. And I did it. And I make it. I went to the best middle school in Beijing. This part of my characteristic was growing together with my life. And also brought it into Isaac. It is exactly the thing that I'm holding within myself when I was the LCP of UIBE. My LC was a very small LC coming by, that, by a lot of other people doing less than 15 exchanges a year having all those financial people sustainability problems. I was so annoyed, so tired of all these complaints, all those concerns raised. In the end, I tell my people, all right, this year, the only thing I'm interested to talk about is how can our LC be the best, be the number one LC in the world in one year? And my LC did it right after the first quarter I finished my term. And it is exactly the same thing which is bothering me every day when I was MCP of China. It doesn't matter how much my predecessors, how, how well my predecessors, predecessors did, how well other countries did. The only wish in my heart is I want to see my country performing the best in the network, contributing the most in the network. And my country did it at least once in 2008 Q1. Which, which, uh, which is a side note, it's actually the secret contributor of I think India's fast growth this, for nowadays. <laughs> and my persistence of pursuing my dream and ambition is exactly, what, ex exactly why I want to run for this position, PI of next year. Because I so much want to make Isaac the truly best student-run organization in the world. I want to, together with you, Build Isaac as the landmark 
a magnificent landmark on this planet. It should be as splendid as the Great Wall of China. It should be as famous as the Pyramid in Egypt. And also can be a place like the Seven Star Hotel in Dubai. Once you were there even for one night, everybody else would get jealous for, for the rest of their life. Hmm. And I want to do that with every single of you here. No matter your LC or your country is big or small. Because, as an ambitious Isaacer, I don't believe the concept of small LC, small countries. So what is that? Come on. What is that? If you want, here I am. Here I am with you to demonstrate to the rest of the network, to demonstrate to your community. There's, there might be only small LCs or small countries with small mentality or small action. But there will be every possibility for us to grow as big as everybody else, as sustainable as everybody else, and as successful as everybody else within just one year. If we can really make ISAT as the magnificent landmark, and my dream might come true, which is, if, our, if ISAT is this magnificent landmark, that will be the time our alumni cannot help to, to, to share the story about ISAT. That will be the time that our campus students will be killed to join ISAT. Then we will become the truly first choice on campus. And that's my ISAT dream. And that's my serious ISA dream. Alright, moving forward with what I'm proposing in the next year, and the theme is very simple, as you can see here. Yeah. <laughs> it's the time to scale up. Why? First of all, it's what I learned from, uh, from the ISA way. The impact statement told me clearly that ISA is an international platform for young people, it's not for part of the young people. I said, we're the international platform to be available for every single use on this planet, to be relevant to every single use in, in this planet, and should be capable to provide opportunity to every single use in this planet, no matter where they're from, no matter how much money their family has, and no, ma no matter which major they are in now. And secondly, we need to scale up, to provide a space for our members to learn and to make our strategic uh, strategy being effective. I want to elaborate this with a very interesting phenomenon I noticed. In the year of summer A, we did, we did 5,550 5, exchanges with 600 local communities. I did a very brief calculation. Each of our team did 9 exchanges. Yeah? And the next year, we're, this year, we're planning to do 7,200. 7, 7, with the same amount of LC, we're planning to do 11 exchanges per LC. So basically, we're planning to grow 2 exchanges every LC in the whole year next year. So I'm just, here's my question. Yeah, so what is the strategy that can exactly just help us to grow two exchanges? No more than two exchanges. Did you see that? This phenomenon is happening in our global level. But is it also happening in your country level? Our ambition, when, it's, when it breaks down into the local level, it doesn't stimulate the incentive of change. Yeah, so if we just want to talk about growing two exchanges per year, I don't know why we're here. Why? Should we just go to the temple, to the church, and pray for a better life? I think that might be more effective, you know. <laughs> and in the end, the final, the most important, scaled up, matters a lot long-term, also for organizational, long-term competitiveness. There are people who are willing, who are capable to do two more exchanges every year. There are also people who are willing and very interested in doing one more exchanges every year. They are there. But what is the opportunity that we're providing to determine what kind of people that we want to we can attract, we can retain. So, what scope that we define is actually the definition of the culture of the organization, which is being defined by the type of people that we want to attract and want to retain in ISAC. So, what is the choice you want to make? That's all what I want to share. And for details, we can catch up later in the, in the coming processes. My name is Li Zhen. I believe now it is the time to scale up then we can thrive, and we will gather for sure. And I'm your candidate, PI candidates, all nine and ten. Thank you very much.